They say the Whaley House is the most haunted house in America, and tonight I'm going to find out. Can I have a hug? Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, we're Mackie and Amanda. I'm Mackie. The time has finally come. This is my alone video. If you didn't know, for Spooktober, Amanda and I decided to both visit the most haunted houses in America, East Coast versus West Coast. I'm over here on the West Coast, so I am going to the Whaley house tonight alone without Amanda. This is the first time we've ever done something like this and I have no idea what's gonna happen. I'm super nervous right now. It's 11 in the morning, so I've still got some hours to go. They say the Whaley House is the most haunted house in America and tonight I'm going to find out. After you see my investigation and Amanda's investigation, it's going to be left up for you guys to decide which coast truly has the most haunted house, east or west. The Whaley House was originally constructed in 1857 and it is rumored to be haunted by the Whaley family themselves. Besides the family, which we'll get more into during the tour of the house tonight, it is also rumored to be haunted by a spirit named Yankee Jim who is hung on the grounds where the Whaley House now stands. Tonight, when I get to the house, we will go over more of the hauntings and the history of this home with the people who know about the house the best, the employees. So I'm gonna mentally prepare myself and then I'm, then I'm gonna head on down to San Diego and venture into America's most haunted house without Amanda. How cool is it? This is so tricky. <laughs> right. There's a portal. I just <laughs> like being the judge. Like it's such a small room. Just... Well, do you know the story of it? No. Oh, you'll I'm hear. So I'm excited to hear. Okay, so we're here with Victor, the operations manager here at the Whaley House, and he's gonna give us a little walkthrough and share some things with us. Absolutely, so we are in the very first room, the very first building that was finished on site. It was completed in 1856, and it was meant to be a rat-proof bravery. So it was meant to keep all the rats out, and keep the grain safe. Unfortunately, it did not succeed. The rats still got in here, it was quite a mess. So Thomas Whaley decided to look for other uses of the building. Eventually, he rented it out as a billiard hall, a place to have Sunday school. They had a polling place here as well for voting. And then from 1869 to 1871, they had San Diego's second courthouse here. At around that time, San Diego was growing into a bigger city, closer to the Bay, where downtown is today and they needed a bigger space. So eventually they moved the smaller courthouse to this location, and that is what we see here today. Throughout this particular room, you'll see pictures of the house at different stages of its life. Uh, one of the coolest pictures is probably the one right here, where you can see they actually had five windows at the top. Currently, we only have three. We also see railroad tracks right in front of it. There were a couple of earthquakes at that time. The train would go back and forth. You have a brick building with all this glass up here, so they decided to remove two of the windows to keep it and make it a little bit sturdier. Pepper trees over here. We have a white picket fence and the two kids here. We don't know who these kids are, but this is probably one of the best and more accurate pictures of the house from the time period. This is from 1890. It's crazy because the house still looks pretty similar to how it did. Exactly, yeah, and that's, that's what we love it. Uh, and then if you come over here, you'll see the train tracks as well, and then you see a gentleman right here. Now, at this point, you don't see the porch anymore, but the cool thing about this photograph is you see Francis Whaley, the oldest son. Francis Whaley was actually the first person that opened this building as a museum. And this is a picture of him playing guitar which is actually really interesting to explain the guitars and 
is actually really interesting that he's playing the guitars and um, showcasing and promoting the Whaley House as a historic location for guests to come and visit, even back then. So he's actually right here in front of the courtroom trying to get guests. We did have an actual trial here uh, to a year ago on May 17th of 2022. And that's really cool because we hadn't had anything here since 1871, right? So one day we get an email from a person that said, I am a judge and I want to hold court in Whaley House, which is the randomest email I could have imagined yeah. at that time. Uh, we did our research, we found out who this gentleman was, he was an actual judge, and we went through the process of what do we need to do to actually have a real case tried here. Well, we didn't just have one, we had four cases tried here, all civil cases. It was a great opportunity for us to showcase what the museum was about, to talk about the history, and it was very successful. Um, the judge was very happy, the city of San Diego was very happy. And overall, it just adds another chapter to the history of the museum. That's awesome. Yes. So we're going to walk into the general store. And we'll follow me in here. So Mr. Whaley built the granary in 1856. And immediately after that, started construction of the Redness, which is what we'll see from this point on. In 1857, he finished the first two-story brick house in San Diego. The brick house in San Diego brick house in San Diego. He was originally from New York and you can see him right there. He first came to California in 1849 during the gold rush. He tried his luck up in San Francisco. He wasn't really looking for gold. He was really selling or leasing equipment to the miners that were up there. He made pretty good money doing that. Eventually moves down to San Diego, builds the granary, and then in 57 builds the house. He wanted to have a business in the residence. And it was very common in uh, the East Coast to do this. So the first floor was actually a general store. One of the first bilingual stores in the area. At that point, California had recently been taken over mm -hmm. by the US from Mexico. So you can see some of the items he used to sell, anything from spices and fabric to guns and medicine. So are all of these just like props pretty much, or are there anything like any original? There are a few items that are original to the family and to the time mm -hmm. period. In these particular cases, when we talk about paranormal investigation, yeah. we call them trigger yeah, items, trigger right? Items. So one of the more interesting ones in this room is the one right here. This is Mr. Whaley's writing desk. This is an original piece. And something that is really interesting is Mr. Whaley turned 200 years old last week. Oh, no way. On October 5th, we threw him a little birthday party. <sighs> And that is his actual piece. So as you go through the museum, as you start doing your investigation, this would be a great uh, part of the experience. Yeah, that's awesome. We have some of his sons, actually his three sons here. Francis Whaley, the oldest son, the one we saw in the photographs in the courtroom. We have the middle son, George Whaley there. Mm -hmm. And then we have the baby. So Thomas Whaley Jr. passed away when he was a year and a half old of scarlet fever. And then it's believed that he is one of the ghosts in the house. Many claim you might hear him crying at night sometimes. Um, most of the spirits, this particular spirit, is experienced upstairs with the nursery guest today. As we go through this door, we'll make our way into the dining room. So if you want to follow me. Oh, not Mrs. Whaley, right? Exactly. So this is the room where we can showcase the women of the house. The first one there is Anna Amelia. She is the oldest daughter. She actually eventually passed away in the house at a later age. We have Violet Whaley, we'll talk about her in a little bit. And then at the far end we have Corinne Whaley. Corinne was the youngest daughter. She lived in the house until 1953. She was the last person to live in the house with the Whaley last name. Okay, something crazy is that just like hit me. We, I was with Amanda. We went to some like the Spruce Spruce Street suspension bridge. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, we went over there. And, like we were there two hours ago, and we were on the bridge. And she's like, "There's a woman here." Like, okay, and she told me some details. She's like, "She's wearing a dress," and then probably ten minutes later, she's like, "Her name's Amelia." And I'm like, Amelia? And we were trying to figure out like who Amelia could be. And then I just looked at her and Amelia. So as we continue on this side, we have a what you would call a family portrait here. We have Anna Whaley, so this is the lady of the house at an older age, obviously. 
We also have Kermit Whaley, the youngest daughter, some of the grandkids. Her name is Marianne Reynolds. She's one of the main stories that we tell here. She was the great granddaughter. She did not live in the house, but she spent most of her time here visiting the family. She actually lived in Oceanside, which is a few miles north of here. One day while playing with her young friends up in Oceanside, she got a hold of what seemed to be a, a toy. It was a glass container. Picks it up, starts playing with it, opens it up. And shortly after that, starts to throw up, starts to not feel very well, and passes away. She was close to her second birthday. What they find is that she actually got a hold of this Kellogg's and Pace, which is poisoning. When you grab the bottle, it rattles almost like a toy, right? So she probably thought it was a toy she could play with. Opens it up, eats it, and dies shortly after that. She is one of the main spirits experienced in the museum. When you walk through, you might feel something holding on to your wrist, holding on to your hat. Uh, women in particular for something tugging at their sleeves, tugging at their clothing, and they believe that's the ghost of Mary Ann Reynolds. All right, we're gonna make our way to the second floor, so follow me. So welcome to San Diego's first commercial theater. This theater was here in 1868 for about five months. Mr. Whaley was a businessman who was always looking for a great opportunity to make extra cash. This was no different. So he knew there was a need for entertainment in San Diego. So he leased out this room to the Thomas Tanner Theater Troupe. They were a traveling performance group. It was almost like vaudeville where they had a variety of skits and performances throughout the night. If you look at the room, it's not very big, but yeah. it's believed that on opening night, it held 150 people. Oh my gosh. So there was a staircase in front of the house, which allowed us to see the second floor. That way the guests did not go through the actual residence, they just came in through that way. Smart. One of the more interesting pieces in here is this photograph. You will have to put it really, really close, but I think you'll, you'll enjoy it. So we see the Whaley House right here. And if you want to go to your right, you'll see an area called Point Loma over here. Oh, no way. And then we see Coronado. Oh, and if you go all the way to this side and you zoom in, you see a silhouette. What do you think that is? Is that a ship? That is the Hotel del Coronado. Oh. That's crazy. Another popular haunted location yeah. in San Diego. So on a clear day, if you looked out that window, you could actually see the Hotel Del Coronado. So we have two bedrooms up here. On my right hand side, we have the master bedroom. That is where mom and dad used to sleep. Thomas and Anna Whaley. A lot of the furniture you see in the house is from the time period. That is one of the rooms where guests believe they've experienced the ghost of Violet Whaley. Violet is known for looking out that window, looking out through towards the courtyard, towards the yard. This is the nursery here to my left. So you'll see a rocking chair in that nursery. That is an original piece, another trigger item, if you will. That belonged to Anna Whaley. That is where she used to rock all of her children to sleep, sing to them, hum to them, and uh, do lullabies until they, they passed out. This is that rocking chair right there? Yeah. But what some people claim is in this particular room, this is where you start hearing the, the baby crying mm -hmm. at night. You'll start getting some activity. You'll see the, and <laughs> this one in particular, the window will trigger the alarm sometimes, even though there's nobody in here. The dolls will move. Oh. <laughs> when I was, I've been doing this for a very long time. And one of the first experiences that I had was, I was in that room and I was cleaning and I picked up one of the dolls and the eyes Move, it would flicker a little bit. And I'm thinking maybe it's the kind of doll that's made to open and close her eyes. It wasn't, it was, they were pretty solid on Oh her. my yeah, gosh, so they were just like good. salt over. Yeah, and again, you know, I was new, I didn't know, maybe it was my imagination, yeah. but I've, I'm not the only person that's reported something similar since then, so. This one is the leg. So these are all Whaley, these belong to Thomas Whaley. So we have this exhibit, all the items you see are on loan from the county of San Diego, and every single piece 
belong to Thomas Sweet. Wait, did you just hear that? It sounded like a baby like, hey. You heard it? San Diego, and every single San Diego, and every single and every single It sounded like a baby like, hey. You heard it? Yeah, from like right yeah. there. Did you hear it? A little bit, yeah. I feel like the camera will be able to hear for sure. It's like, hey. So everything you see in this room will be original to the family. It belonged to the you know, ran away these shoes over there. We have a gun. The gun belonged to Corinne, the youngest daughter, excuse me. She was a librarian a few miles south of here, and she used to take it for protection when she would go to work. Whose dress was this? So that is a replica of the dress that Anna Whaley would have had. Mm. Um, it's obviously on a riser, but if you bring it down, it gives you a, an idea of their size. Anna Whaley was four foot nine, approximately, mm -hmm. and Thomas Whaley was five foot two, and they were very small, petite people. Right, we're now going to go into the parlor. So we'll see the back parlor first. Katrina, do you know what this room is? Mm -hmm. Katrina looks super excited. <laughs> I'll tell you. All right. So we talked about Violet Whaley throughout the tour. So she was the middle daughter. She got married at a very, very young age. And quickly after the wedding, the husband disappeared. His name is George. George was nowhere to be found. She became very upset. They were looking for this guy. And then eventually, they receive a letter. She receives a letter where he explains that Everything he had told her was a lie. Everything he had told her was basically him just trying to convince her to marry him. And then he says, you know what, I, I don't have all this money. What I told you about my family was not true. What he does is he says, but I promise you I can make it up to you. I can do this really well. I can come back and be the man you want me to be. Just give me three to four years. She obviously said no to that. They go through a divorce, she becomes very upset. She's eventually diagnosed with melancholy, which is depression, and she is kept under a close watch. One day, she jumps into the water cistern, trying to take her life, doesn't succeed. They keep an even closer watch on her until eventually she gets a hold of her dad's gun. She goes into the outhouse, the, the bathroom, and shoots herself in the chest close to the heart. She was alive when they found her. She was brought into the house and laid down in this area here. Now this is not the original couch, but a couch would have been in that place. And she eventually passed away in this area. Many believe that when you walk through this particular room, you might feel pressure on your chest or be overcome with sadness. And they believe that is the ghost of Violet Whaley. We have a photograph of her and her sister on that side. Violet is the one on the left and Anna Emilia is the one on the right. Such a sad story. So sad. The worst part about it, aside from the death, is that at that point, it was kind of the decline of the Whaley family in general here in San Diego. Thomas did not want to be in the house anymore. It made him sad to be here at the place where his daughter passed away. He had already lost a son here as well. So they eventually moved to downtown San Diego. And that's eventually where Thomas Whaley passed away. Now the main story, the one that everybody talks about, the one that the museum, the house, the family, the property is known for, is for something that happened before the house was even built. On this property, in 1852, they used to have the execution grounds. Did you guys hear that in there? There's like a loud tap. It sounded like a tap on the glass. In 1852, before the house was built, they used to execute criminals on this site. And there's a story of a man, his name was Yankee Jim Robinson. Yankee Jim was a um, pretty well-known horse thief in Northern California. He eventually came down to San Diego to try his luck down here and see what he could steal from people. Well, he stole a boat. And he was captured quickly after stealing this rowboat. When he's brought to trial, they sentence him to hang. So they bring him to the property, again, before the house was built. They set him up, they put him on a wagon. The concept was you put somebody on the wagon, you hit the mule, the mule takes the wagon, the cart, the person falls and you break your neck. Oh. This guy falls and rumor says that he was pretty tall for the gallow. So instead of breaking his neck, his feet could actually still tiptoe on the road. Oh. So he strangled for a few minutes. Oh my God. While everybody watched. He eventually dies and he's buried down the street in the Campo Santo Cemetery. One of the spectators of this execution was Thomas Whaley. Thomas Whaley was 
probably the first person to report paranormal activity in this house. He would hear heavy footsteps upstairs. He would feel like somebody was watching him. And eventually, even Lily and Whaley, the, the youngest daughter, reported, you know, that she would see her parents. But again, the first one, the original ghost of the property was Yankee Jim Robinson. And to make it even more interesting, would you mind stepping on the side for a second? Right about there. The archway stands exactly where the hangings took place. Oh. <laughs> so many people that stand <laughs> below the archway feel something around their neck and in some cases and i've seen this and i know it sounds <laughs> crazy i know it sounds really yeah. weird but i've seen this happen people will have a red line around <gasps> their neck, and it's one of those things where you just throw your hands up in there like i don't know you want to hope that it is an, an honest example of something paranormal but yeah you'll get a red line around your neck and it happens more often than it should we'll have a group of people in here and you'll see a woman's hair for example start to flicker in the back oh. or move around like. Nothing's touching it. No one's touching it, but it'll move around as well. So there are also the pets. Uh, they had a horse that was known as the finest horse, horse in San Diego. And sometimes you will hear the uh, heavy hoofs of the horse outside. You'll hear the lip trail of the horse, you know, the... Oh, yeah. Horse, right? Oh. Um, you'll experience something brushing up against your leg, maybe even licking your leg. And that's <laughs> to be one of the dogs of the family. So it's not just... The outlaws, they were executed. It's not just the family. We have the pets. Mm. We have everybody still here. And oh. the stories continue. The house has been around for a very long time. People have a lot of experiences to share with us. And we hear of one almost daily. Well, one of the other trigger items, and this is probably the, the coolest one that I, I enjoy to talk about, is this pump organ. Oh. So the concept behind it, if you try to pump the pedal, the, play the keys, excuse me, you don't have a sound. So then you open the bellows here, you're thinking, okay, it should work now. It doesn't. <laughs> At the bottom, you have two pedals. So when you start pumping the pedals. Oh, what? So eventually. Oh my God. <laughs> wow, that is Eventually so cool. good. That's so cool. Item, that belonged to Anna Whaley. Oh, no way. Last time I was here, I don't know if you saw, but Banjo let me play that piano upstairs. Yeah. When I did, all the, the REM pods, the cat balls, like everything started triggering. We were filming upstairs as well, and they had a couple of cat balls on the piano, and they would just play the one note. Uh huh and the cat bowl would go off. Yeah. And then I told them, I'm like, well, if you really want to push this, the vibration might be making it yeah, yeah. turn on. Why don't you just put it like away from the piano and mm -hmm. just close enough? And then sure enough, it went off. Like there were like four or five cat balls, which the cat balls, mm -hmm. I think are one of the funnest, <laughs> coolest things people use. And they're so simple, right? Yeah. But they work pretty they well. They make no sense. I'll tell one other piano stories yeah. so we came here that night all that stuff was going off and i went home and around four o'clock in the morning my brother's room like his wall backs our living room and i have my piano in there mm -hmm. he's a super heavy sleeper like doesn't really talk about any of this stuff because he's scared at four in the morning he heard a loud crash in that room and he heard someone play like a couple piano keys like do 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 and he said, what? And so he went out there and didn't see anything. In the morning, he walked out and he was really trying to look to see what fell. And he couldn't mm -hmm. find a single thing. And the piano cover was like pushed up. We okay. didn't have a cat at that point. We didn't have anything. I'm like, what if it was... Especially if the, if the spirit has any sort of musical background, you know, even yeah. as, as a musician, like you, you just can't get away from it. Like, yeah. You want to play it, you want to touch uh -huh. it, you want to hear what it sounds like. I wondered so, yeah. if it was Mrs. Whaley because it was the same night I got mm -hmm. home from here and then that's the only time that has ever happened in my house ever. So I'm like, hmm. All right, so now we just have to figure out where we're going to start.
what's with like these little buildings? I've like seen them so many times, but I've never really like asked. Yeah, so you know. as we know, the original building is the Whaley House. Yeah. But in the 1960s or so, the county took over the property. The county decided to bring them to the location to save them from demolition and just be great historic preservation. One of them's our gift shop. It's called the Verna House. Uh, the woman that lived there, Mrs. Verna, passed away in that house with her cats. Uh, the two buildings there are false front buildings that were originally down by the harbor, mm -hmm. where there used to be a brothel, and now it's a restaurant. So, great oh transition gosh. there. Do you think that little house is haunted, where the gift shop is? Yeah, so everybody's had a comment about every single building here. The employees that work in the gift shop often hear people upstairs. I know the alarm has gone off a couple times after we closed, and it's normally a motion alarm. Uh, I know that these gentlemen here have experienced the woman in the dining room. And then out here, uh, have you ever researched the Whaley House and the history of the Whaley House? They talk about the police officers that come up here. I think it was late 70s, early 80s. There was a report of a woman crying. At that time, there was a staircase at the front. It wasn't original, but they, they did it for the museum purposes. And this person said there was a woman crying on the staircase, and they tried to approach her, and she was not complying, so they called the police. Cop shows up, and this woman looks at him, smiles, and then disappears. Oh, my God. And the police officer put that in his report. It was like a whole thing. We have the letter that the police officer submitted later on saying, yeah, this is what happened. And then this is her shed right here. Yeah, so the brick building we're here is the general area where the outhouse would have been, the bathroom. So whenever we use the restroom, we're basically visiting where the outhouse was back then. Now you know. So now, yeah, now, yeah, I know, now, now you can now use the restroom. Yeah, yeah, go for it. <laughs> You never know. Well, I do. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. That was like, oh my That's god. Immediate. That was immediate. That's crazy. I don't know if the camera's rec- Oh my god. Just step out here. Can you step away all the way? Make it stop, please. Oh my god. Dude. <laughs> it's rare that it hits oh, the blue. I know. If we uh, shut lights off yeah. and leave the room, uh, it'll go away. Really? Yeah. Let's try uh, that really quick. Yeah, so as long as this is going I right know, now. I know that sounds funny. Um, Hold on. It just stopped completely. When we talk about it, it like almost knows, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah. Dude. Oh my god. Going yeah. Alright, yeah, let's. Yeah. So we fill the lights in here and then basically leave the room, like, uh, make it kind of like appear that it's alone. Um, it tends to get a little more active and aggressive. And it tends to be like that with most of the rooms in the house. Uh -huh. um, and I'd like to describe it as if like, if you're a group of people, if there's a group of people in a room and one of them doesn't speak the same language as the other people, they're a lot less likely to like engage, right? And if mm -hmm. somebody speaks Spanish and they're around a bunch of English people, people. It's doing it. Oh, yeah. There it goes. Oh my god. The second I stepped through the threshold, it went blue. Yeah. It's kind of like it gets nervous and shy. I swear I just saw a shadow like standing right here. Like, like this tall. It looked like so, just a black silhouette. Um, we can set up more objects. If we take a music box into this room where you say saw a shadow. Yeah. So, if we leave this in here, and we kind of like hang out, we can gauge it to where like, if, if this is like protecting the door, because it's too yeah. close. But as we turn it. Wait, so we're just stomping upstairs. Like loud stomps. Can you make a noise of some sort? Sorry, that was me. That was my throat. It's crazy. 
heavy thoughts. Yeah. We get a lot of that stuff. If we leave this music box in here, the odds of us, like if we, like right now, it'll like pick up me, yeah. right? So this is how it works, is there's nothing, and then something moves in front of it, uh, it picks it up. But if we leave it in here, and then we leave the room, mm -hmm. oh. or we don't even have to leave the room. Now it's like right where it's all the time. Exactly, right yeah. There. That's crazy. Wow. Oh my gosh. So, this room we get a lot of activity as if people are moving around the store. Um, when we leave, it tends to go up a lot more. Or if you talk about it, it's almost, it's almost like it's hard for me to, when I talk about it, it's like, no, I'm here now, jerk. Yeah. Like, don't talk yeah, about yeah. me like I'm not here. Um, and so that's what you get. Do you have any idea, like, who people think that is? And I try not to jump to conclusions. Uh, for me, I know how the equipment works. Mm -hmm. Like, we just demonstrated it. Like, there's nothing in front of it right now. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> the best we have to identify spirits, though, I would say is probably the dowsing rods. I don't know if you guys have used yes. those. Like, so much of our equipment, like, malfunctioned tonight. Yeah. And I asked Amanda, I'm like, are the dowsing rods in here? Because we always have our dowsing yeah. rods, and she said they broke into four pieces. Wow. I well, know. Well, we have dowsing rods okay. if you want to use those. That's perfect. Um, the dowsing rods, I think, are the best way to really get answers. Mm -hmm. They're very responsive. Um, the Estes method with the spirit box mm -hmm. is difficult to get because it's a little more direct. Yeah. Um, but when you do get it, you know, you're actually getting words. The obelisk is strange in the sense that it gives you words, but the words, in my experience, seem to be based more on emotion rather than like uh, direct literal meaning of the words. You'll get a lot of like angry words. You know, mm -hmm. This person's upset. Okay. Or you get a lot of happy words. Thomas Whaley, uh, some people say he was kind of a grumpy man. Uh -huh. And when you go, we got the artifacts in there that yeah. were his trigger items. You put the obelisk on there, and it gets real mad at you. Oh my god, really? <laughs> yeah. okay, we're gonna have to try uh, that. <laughs> yeah, so we took it into the archway room, and it said, not rope hang. Right. And then this thing just goes, yeah. up, like there's That's somebody crazy, walking yeah. around in here. Can you step to the side and make it stop, please? <laughs> I think the last time I was here, when I'd asked to do stuff, it ignored me too down here. Unless it was. Well, they say it takes about 10 to 15 seconds for your oh, responses. Right. Like when you ask your questions in EVPs and spirit boxes, they say wait about 10 to 15 seconds. Okay. There's a lot of people who believe that um, time just works differently in a spirit realm, um, especially when they believe that spirits can be in multiple rooms at the same mm -hmm. time for us, but for them, it's very okay. different. They're not existing in the same place at the same time for themselves. But for us, we're experiencing the same spirit in multiple areas at the same time. So there's a lot of different theories on how that kind of stuff works. Because uh, we've had where situations where people have experienced the sadness of Violet up in her room, but then also capturing images of her on the couch where she passed away. So for the spirit to exist in multiple places with the same emotion at multiple times, because time and the way okay. it just they, there's theories that it works yeah. differently for them. This is making so much sense because we're always like, how can they like be in the room over there but setting off something like this? Exactly. Where you have to go in front of it. Yeah. Because we always give them like we're always like, okay, we'll give you 15 seconds. We always say that. Yeah, exactly. And then like on the last second is when it will go off. Yeah, like, but then sometimes you can get on a roll, mm -hmm. um, especially with the dowsing rods where it might take a while to like get your first response but like your response of like if there's a spirit here please cross the rods and it takes a while mm -hmm. and then it moves and then you say thank you please uncross the rods and it's almost immediate yeah. like they're already with you oh, there in that moment okay. whatever tools you guys want to okay. use and go awesome. after let me know okay yeah. did anyone hear that it sound like a woman's voice katrina did you hear i that? just heard that awesome Awesome. A woman's voice. Katrina, did you? Katrina, did you? Katrina, did you? I just heard that. It's because. Oh my god, I 
to keep it's okay. Distance. It's okay. <laughs> she said, "Yeah." I it's heard not that. Like that room. I yeah. heard that clear as day. I heard it yeah. right behind you. That's so crazy. If I turn this way, I want to see it. Also, I don't know if I caught it, but out of the corner of my eye, like this happened way earlier. I could have sworn, like while well, you were talking to Victor at one point, mm -hmm. I was like. Filming around, I could have sworn I saw something walk past, and I swear the camera had to have caught it. So if it didn't, I'm gonna be upset. Okay. Do you know when? Was it upstairs? Yeah, okay. like like a full body. Okay. So I don't know if. It, uh. So this is an EMF reader um, here in the White House. It goes off quite often. It usually only goes off when spirits are around. They emit an electromagnetic frequency. Um, we're gonna head up to the theater that's haunted by Thomas Tanner and see if we can get some responses from him using the EMF reader and it's, the dowsing rods. It's going off right now. Yeah, well, we are in a haunted house. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> so, it's kind of like walking into the yeah, theater. Yeah, so that's what I mean. If you take this with you, okay. and you'll see kind of what I mean as you go. Okay. I'm just gonna leave it in the shot yeah. the whole time. Oh, oh one little spike, too. Hold it up a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh my god. Does it it's, do this every time? Holy crap. Oh my god. When you put it near the stage, it goes crazy. Yeah. It does this every single time, or like, it varies? Every time, no. But okay. it. But the theater is very active uh -huh. with spirits. Um, we get a lot of reports in here. Okay. And using the dowsing rods up here, um, you get a lot of responses. All right. So well, if you want to try and contact Thomas Tanner. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so here in the theater, there's a spirit named Thomas Tanner, and we were told he's a little flirtatious. We're just going to get straight into his favorite question, and then we'll go from there. Thomas Tanner, are you here with us? Can you open these dowsing rods for yes? Can I have a hug? Does he do that all the time? For women. Really? He won't do it for Wait, men. can I see you try? <laughs> Let's have you try. So. So Thomas Tanner is flirtatious with women, mm -hmm. um, but when a, when a male asks, Thomas Tanner, can I have a hug? You get it. Yeah, he's treating you. He does, you does not know. <laughs> that is so funny. Thomas Tanner, can I have a hug? You already started it's before you even finished. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you want to let go? <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. The, the only way you really get him to let go, now it's too late, is if there's another woman in the room and you ask him, who do you want to hug next? Okay. And then the, <sighs> and then the rods will point to, to the I woman kinda... he hasn't touched yet. Do you want to hug me or do you want to hug Mackie? He doesn't want to let go. He doesn't want to let go. It's, it's funny because let go. you said that and the thing actually swung back into yeah. me. He likes yeah. you. He'll, he, he'll, Ooh, he'll I guess he likes brunettes. If you have the, a room full of women, it'll go from each woman. Wow. Like he'll point at the next woman in line, basically. <laughs> Before Katrina takes off, we're gonna have her go under the Estes method, and I'm gonna be holding dowsing rods at the same time. And the same question's gonna be asked to both of us, and we'll see if anything matches up. I'm excited to try this out. Especially here. I don't think we've ever done the Estes method here. Okay, it might be a little loud, but... Okay. Is this the kind of place you should sit for this? The back corner of the stage, so even though it says up on the rest can. Um, that would actually be good, because you're like far away yeah. from us. You see the drop off there, don't, yeah. don't go too far, but you sit in that corner. Because it's kind of right where you are now. Okay, yeah, sit there. It's loud, but I think it's not too overpowered. Honestly, louder the better. 
I might sit in front of her, like right here. Text yeah. Us. Text us. The dowsing rod holder should probably ask you questions, yeah? Oh. Yeah, yeah okay. that's what they say. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, because you're the one in touch with the spirit. You're teaching us so much. Stop. Stop. We haven't even started. All right, before we begin, stop. <laughs> I want to introduce myself. My name is Mackie. That's Katrina back there with the headphones on. You can say something through the black box she's holding, and she will be able to hear you and let me know. Are you open to talking to us tonight? You can open these dowsing rods for yes, or close them for no. Oh. Look up. Are you above us? Or are you pointing to where you're standing at in this room? We also have these two cat balls set up, one on the seat over there and one by my feet set those off as well, but... No. No what? You don't know how to or you don't want to? You can open these for you don't yes. want... You can open these for you don't want to set them off or you can okay. close them for you don't know how. I just feel like that's not true. Estus? Yes, it's the Estes method. I'm sure you've done it before. Just felt like something like brushed my arm lightly like that. Thomas Tanner does like to flirt. Thomas Tanner. Just heard something over there. Thomas Tanner, are you still in here with us right now? Yes or no? I shook a little bit. A light? Are you talking about the light that Nick's holding in his hand? Oil? I swear I keep feeling something brush my arm. Are you touching me? Yes or no? Can you move this other one open as well? At work? By yeah. accident? It's probably me, right? So now that... I don't know. I don't think you touched it. I definitely did, but I didn't know if it could be vibration. Was that you who set off the cat ball right now by your feet? Yes. Can you tell Katrina yes? Thinking. <laughs> so I hear you like to flirt with the ladies. Say that again? <laughs> <laughs> So I heard you like to flirt with the ladies who come through here. Is that true? Radio? Yes. Get out? <sighs> who do you want all of us to get out? Yeah. <laughs> Nick. That could have been Nick. This is gonna be my question yeah. right now. Can you see the name of the person you want to get out? All right, I'm gonna ask. Can you tell Katrina the name of the person that you want to leave this room? Can you Where? Say, can you say the name loud and clear? The person you want to leave. No. Dude, I. Oh. I feel like something's touching me. What are you saying, too? Like, my hands, like, no, it feels like, like someone, something's trying to grab my hand and I don't like... I swear I've been telling him that it feels like something keeps brushing my arm. Yeah, something keeps feeling like it's brushing my yes. hands. Yes. Okay, go back up here. <laughs> Is that you brushing Katrina as well? The same person who's doing it to me? Yes or no, and tell Katrina your answer, too. Afters? That's weird. I think it might be me. Can you point to where you are in this room right now? 
Who did it? Oh, that's when I asked. Birthday? It was just Thomas Wayman's birthday, right? It was. His 200th birthday. We have talked to Thomas Whaley up in this house, in this room. Really? So These it things. could be him as well. These things just pointed to like right I'm here. I saw. Okay. Right I'm here. I saw. Right I'm here. I saw. Okay. Are you standing behind me? A winner? Are you standing behind me right now? Exposed. Exposed. Yes. You? <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you standing in between me and Katrina right now? When you ask. Oh my God. Look, look at. Yes, he is standing between us. Can you tell Katrina hello? Up. Can you tell her hi through that box right now? All right, go ahead. Four years. Small. Large. Found. Match. I don't know what any of these are meaning. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Oh, yeah. Do you have any Thanks. ideas? So. Comes first. What is he talking about? Do you think it's Thomas? The so what's interesting is once you once you start talking to spirits, kind of the way we are, yeah. and then me and you start talking, they can't distinguish Strange. whether they're talking to, that we're having a conversation and not talking at them anymore. So now while we talk. They're responding to these no, things. Right. So when it's saying things like match or four years. See, like, uh, yeah. yeah, like, yeah. so even though we're having a conversation, it's interjecting mm -hmm. within that conversation. Okay, last part filled with options. <laughs> okay. So when you think about the words that yeah. we're having and then it trying to respond to those in a random way. Well, threatened. <laughs> threatened? Do you feel threatened? Like that? Do you feel threatened, yes or no? Yes. What was that? That's the music box oh. downstairs. Estes. Yes, we're doing the Estes method. My core? Do you like it when women come up here? Thinking. Why, is it, why are you thinking so much? It's me. Alive? Is Thomas Whaley up here? No stopping. About in the clear. In the clear. In the clear. Is Thomas Whaley up here? Yes or no? Equal kicks? I think I just heard a whisper right now. You see it over 10 minutes. Yeah. 566. Six. Right, I'm gonna go get Katrina. <laughs> Everyone's face whenever you pull them out of the S's method. I know, right? What was your experience? It was just like weird. It was like a male's voice kept coming through really clearly. Yeah. And like that's what I could hear. But then like there were a lot of ones that would be phrases in a woman's voice, but it was so cut out that I could only hear like one of the words she was saying. Let me ask and you this. The male voice would come in really strong. I, I don't know if you'll be able to remember this. But the, you said the word threatened once. Was that male or female? That was female. So that's really interesting. Because uh, here is um, a story that's not really well known about the Whaley House that a lot of our Music guides box is do. going off down yeah, there. Yeah, that thing will go off. Yeah. Online. When the guides give their tours, they will come up to this theater and people will sit here and the guides will continue to talk mm -hmm. about the history. On a semi-regular basis, not all the time, 
but enough to where it adds some consistency to the story. A guest will come up to the guide and say, hey man, there's a woman sitting or standing in the corner just staring you down, like giving you like the death stare as if she's like, in, like doesn't like you here. But I was too afraid to turn around and look at her. And so people who are strangers, they don't know each other. These, these, this story will have like weeks, right? Multiple guides have had somebody come up to them and be like, there's a woman back there. What? Like just kind of giving you a death stare. <laughs> what? Um, there is some consistency to the story of like a woman in this room that like feels threatened or displeased. Or um, we don't really, like from a history standpoint, we're not really sure where she comes from. Okay. Um, we know that Thomas Tanner is in this theater and he likes women, but there is evidence from kind of what I just told you from consistent stories now with you doing the Estes method where a woman has told you she feels threatened by you on the she stage. She mentioned the Estes. Oh yeah, I know. She kept saying Estes, Estes, yeah. Estes. It's interesting that, you know, some things we have history for, Thomas Whaley, Thomas Tanner, the Whaley family, where it's documented history of why these things might occur. But the interesting part about a woman who haunts this room who is displeased or threatened or, you know. Oh, did you guys hear that? Yes. Yeah. Coming up the stairs. Something, yeah. What the fuck was that? <laughs> what was that? What? <laughs> Have you ever heard anything like that? Very, very rare. Hold, okay, hold on. I gotta go show this. What? 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 You don't think it was the rocking chair? It sounded like that it was sounded, right yeah, here. here but like, that sounded almost like a doorknob. I know, but like where? It even been here. So what the it's, hell? It's rare that you get such distinct noises no, like that. No, uh, I mean, I'll just stood there. I was waiting for someone to just like bust down the door and I saw yeah. just be like... So when I come in here, like when we do investigations, uh, I purposely will close all the doors in the house and then once a week I come in and one of them are open. So That sounded like someone trying to open a door and they like couldn't, I don't yeah. know. That was crazy though. That yeah. went on for what, like five seconds? Yeah, like a doorknob kind of being played with. All right. Well, you probably have to go read. <laughs> on that note. On that note, on that note, note I think I'm gonna get the hell out of here. <laughs> Leave you alone. Don't make me go alone. We'll, we'll walk you down. Yeah. All right. That was crazy. That was gnarly. Okay, let me just. That was crazy. That one, I just cannot eat. All right. Yeah, I wonder. What the hell? All right. So we just walked Katrina out because she had to leave. As you're coming back in here, you so, said the laser moved. So the laser, when I line it up, and I line it up in the same spot every night, it's lined up directly with the center, like oh. where the diamond is there. So that way I can paint the whole room with it. And I usually will close the boxes so that way they don't pass the shadow. But you can see that it's pointing. Yeah. Here. So when we close this, oh. so it's been moved down like that. A time. lot, yeah. yeah. Because every night I come in, I set it up in the same spot um, where I come here, and then I angle it. And I'll, like, I'll put it there. So it uh -huh. have gone all the way down to that corner is highly unusual. All right, well, yeah. maybe we leave it there again and see yeah, if we'll it. Yeah, see what happens. Okay. With it, right? Those lights, it's kind of funny. They're on a timer, they should be off by now. It's not like anything anybody did wrong. Uh, that timer continuously, we don't know why it gets messed up. That's weird. But there's suspicion. Oh, did you hear that? I did hear that. As we talk about the lights. There's no one out here, right? No. Outside the window? No, that was loud in here. I've recently learned this since we have Thomas Bowie's effects in that cabinet. When you go put it on there, uh, you tend to get a lot of emotions from Thomas himself. That's well, it's cool. interesting to look at it now, right? Yeah. And see... What is it saying now while we're in a courtroom? 
might be yeah. random, might not be. Do, is this stuff that would have just popped up? No, like, those all just okay. popped up just Speak, now. Speak, evening, and leather. Yeah. Speak is definitely one that for yeah. sure correlates. If you see it, we're not going to turn it off. Okay. We're take it and put it on top of Thomas Bailey's effects right. and see what kind of response we get from it. So right on top of Thomas yeah. Whaley's things, just leave it there like that. For me, yeah. no way. Yeah. King joke. Yeah. Like he's saying, like I'm the king. Just yeah. kidding. What? Board. What? Sure. Record. Record. Kite. So this is kind of what I mean by like we're not sure what a lot of these words. Mike. Mean. Nickel. Um, my name's Nick. <laughs> my dad's name is Mike. <laughs> yeah, so, but we feel like the presence of Thomas Whaley attached to these trigger items yeah. has such a strong presence. We turned the obelisk on. You saw the whole time we were coming from the courtroom mm -hmm. through the hallway. We weren't really getting anything. Now that I'm talking, it's almost like he doesn't want to interrupt me. Yeah. But we put it up there and then we say, Thomas Whaley, you know, what do you think? Pattern. <laughs> Dirty plan. Dirty plan. <laughs> Thomas, are you okay with us? Later. I was swear to God, I was gonna say, are you okay with us setting this on your things? Yeah. I <laughs> swear on everything. Can you tell us something about these items that we have right here in front of us? Maybe say what one of them is. Maybe you try asking him. <laughs> Well, yeah. Oh, there was a tap there too. Yeah. Thomas Whaley, with your things here in this cabinet, how does it make you feel that we're here talking about you and the effects that you've left behind? Bottom. Bottom. Area. Me. Oh, me. Exactly. Yes, so, um, yes. his area. That's yeah. crazy. Should we leave that there or you bring it with it us? It's, it's just you it's, won't be able to well, hear it. Well, it's not okay. that you can or can't hear it, but it also goes back to once you contact a spirit and you're engaging with it, it's hard to like stop engaging with it kind of at whim mm -hmm. because it still thinks you're engaging with it. Okay. And then like me and you are having a conversation about it right yeah. now. But Thomas Whaley's still listening. You know, so... I just heard a man's voice right there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's just like... Uh, so, something. well, this archway is where you tend to run into Yankee Jim. Oh, true. Right? So now when we turn the obelisk on in here, um, sometimes this is where you tend to run into Yankee Jim. Ouch. Who else? Yankee Jim, do you remember me at all? We had some crazy stuff happen with him in here last yeah. time. Like we heard his spurs, like the sound of spurs. Spurs, that's interesting. Yeah. So th there is a story that I don't know all the ins and outs and validity to, mm -hmm. um, but there's another spirit named Juan Verdugo, who is another outlaw who was killed on the property. Um, and sometimes you get him in a similar way as Yankee Jim. It doesn't look like we're getting anything from the obelisk right okay. now. Uh, but it's interesting to see how... It just felt like someone poked my ribs. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, the spirit of Juan Verdugo pushes people around. No way! Yeah. I did not know that. Um, it sound, felt like just like a poke to the rib. There's been a couple of people who like feel like he's pushing him down the stairs. He's probably Please the most uh, physical. Know, yeah, exactly. Okay. Like pushing people right. around. I really like the mag lights too. Oh, yeah, like the. We tend to get more violet responses upstairs oh. in her rooms. 
here we get images of her laying, like as if she's dying. Like, right? like on the thermal, you mean? Yeah, um, more, more so when you take pictures. People oh, will no. see like um, her haze as if she's laying here dying. But I always come in here with the thermal because okay. I, I get readings in here. Uh, we've quote unquote contaminated this room at this point. But that's oh, okay. really? Well, because when you come into a room with a thermal, like I've gotten footprints on the ground in here. Oh, no way. But we've no been walking way. around yeah. right now. Um, but like no one's on the couch. Okay. Scan the couch. Like we know no one has sat on this couch, right? Uh, that, when, once you start to get heat, like that's your flashlight. Oh. Sound like someone's walking. That room has been really active tonight. Uh, That's weird. Ever since we got Mr. Whaley's objects in there, we've gotten a lot more activity in there. It's interesting to see also how things follow us, because now that we haven't moved the music box since we've been in there, yeah, and now it's not hardly going on. I'm gonna set this on his desk right here because it was his birthday. Okay. Have you ever used the Spirit Talker app? No. You haven't? No, I have not. It's actually really accurate. It's the only really? app we'll use. Wow. We can... I can see this cat talk going off though. Oh, you're right. <laughs> We're wanting to speak to Thomas Whaley or any of the other spirits here in the Whaley house. If any of you are open to communicating with us right now, can you trigger any of our devices? You can get two footprints here, almost. Oh. So they're yeah. faint, but they, they appear. That's crazy. Something just definitely brushed up against yeah. my leg. It just said mirror. It said hall mirror. I wonder why it went so quiet all of a sudden. You know, I have no idea. It's one of those things where sometimes it's very active and then sometimes yeah. it, they might just get tired of us. In that case, I might go upstairs and see in if- In the theater? Yeah. Now that I, if I don't go with you, yeah. Thomas Tanner likes <gasps> women much more than he does. Remember he was basically telling us that he wanted me to leave the whole time. Yes. So. Hello all. Okay, I'm shutting that down. Okay, yeah, I think the flashlight turned off too at some point when we were talking about oh, Thomas really? Tanner, there yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, I guess I'm going upstairs.
roll in here. I feel like that's a good sign. Did you like it? Can you turn off this flashlight if you like that? Just felt like someone walked up behind me. Can you turn off the flashlight if you didn't like it? Okay. Alright, turn. We make the red pod stop too, please. Thank you. Whoa. I just heard a loud whisper. Sounds like someone's creeping up the stairs. Let's see if it starts talking again on your way. Okay, here I go again. <laughs> oh my god. Can you draw this flashlight to confirm that you're reacting to me playing your piano? Going up to it and tap it and turn it on. What about guitar? Do you like guitar? Should I play some guitar? Turn on the flashlight if I should. I don't know what that means. Okay, can you please make that stop? Is this Thomas that I'm talking to right now? Can you give me a sign if this is Thomas that I'm talking to? Okay. Thomas. I hear you like the ladies. Thomas. Can you make this go red? If you like being alone in here with me, it gets spiked up to red. To be red. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. The flashlight's going off. Vibrations that's making that stuff go off. I'm gonna try hitting the piano one more time. I don't even need to play the guitar, I don't think. Let's see what happens. Alright, I'm gonna play again. Three, two, one. So I think we got some really good reactions in here. The REM pod was going crazy, the flashlight, everything. The K2 is still going off. I don't have that much time left. So I think I'm going to have to wrap it up in the place that I really don't want to go to. And that's the courtroom, because it's so scary in there. Should I go down into the courtroom? Can you light up any of our devices? I'll give you some time to answer. Something that we just brushed my leg. Well, it's interesting for your pad. I heard you ask, should I go down to the courtroom? Yeah. Would you light up any equipment? And you, you were almost disappointed that it didn't. But after everything goes crazy, and then Thomas Tanner, the young woman up here, 
he's not gonna want you to go down that oh. Oh, God, God. So, You're right. You're right that everything goes silent. So okay. Quiet. Setting up and that thing's going crazy. Wow. Right. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna leave the room. Okay. And it's gonna be the same system. I won't come in and shower whatever. But okay. Say, I want you in here. Okay. I'll come back. All right. Sounds good. All right. Very good.
Okay, I've never seen a run pod do this. Alright, I'm gonna turn the lights off. Three, two, one. Oh, that's terrifying. Can you make that stop, please? Alright. Now I'm here, alone, in the dark. And I think you're sitting next to me or somewhere in this corner. I'm gonna be asking you some questions. It feels so happy, it's crazy. Can you make that stop, please? Or I'm gonna turn it off completely. You can't make it stop. Give me 15 seconds to make it stop completely, or I'm turning it off.
Yes. Do you like all the visitors that come here? Something just touched my neck, it's so weird. I know. Please don't touch me. Can you say the name of this room that we're in? Courtroom. It looks like the laser is moving. It just looked like someone was standing right here. Okay, I'm gonna pack up my stuff and because <laughs> this is crazy. I swear, it, I thought you were standing right here. It looked like a guy's face right here, and then I shined my light and there was no one there. Yeah. What the heck? It's it's crazy when you're in here by yourself. Yeah, um, it's so hev It's heavy. It's like. It's such a thick energy, like, I don't even know how yeah. to describe it. People uh, would have to come sit there for themselves. Nick, have you ever been in here? Yeah. 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 That's Anna Whaley. Hi, Anna. The one that was in her house playing the piano. Wow, she looks like you. That's what. Oh, I know. That's what she other people like said. You. I know. Oh I know. my gosh. Amanda said that too. 
Well, it's officially past 1 a.m. I made it. Definitely say that the Whaley House is the most haunted house in America. You guys let us know what you think. We just want to say thank you to the Whaley House for letting me come out here. They do paranormal tours here also, so you can book one of those and come investigate for yourself. We'll link that down in the description, so make sure you check them out. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.